Is it a plane? Is it a bird? No, it's Superman Day. Here oh. you go, guys. <laughs> Today is International Superman Day, so I wish you and your own Superman a great day. It is also Rose Day Rose and day. Jean Day. So if you want to get hammered to uh, celebrate Superman Day, that, that works. That works. Too. Are they a good combination to drink together? Okay, you guys try it and you tell us. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so that is the, the days. What else is today? Today is Sunday in New Zealand. It's 8 a.m. New Zealand time right now. And we are going to be doing a live session. That means that you guys can ask us any questions about traveling in New Zealand because we kind of are the travel experts of New Zealand. But Laura... Why are we the experts? <laughs> well, this is Robin and I'm Laura and we're the team behind nzpocketguide.com, which is New Zealand's largest travel guide. It literally has thousands and thousands of articles to help you plan the perfect trip to New Zealand. Uh, of course, when you're actually able to come to New Zealand, because yet again, at the time of recording, the borders are still closed. No! It is the, is that the 13th of June? 2021 so yes the borders are still closed to most international travelers for new zealand but if you are overseas that's it's never too early to to plan so go never. ahead and go on to nzpocketguide.com to start planning the perfect trip to new zealand and um, but if you're not really into reading well this is what this live reading session sucks. is for <laughs> So if you want to actually hear our words rather than read them, then we do this live session um, every single Sunday at 8 a.m. New Zealand time. And if you want to know what time that is in your time zone, there's a handy link in the description below. Or otherwise, you can always subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell so that you get a notification when we go live. And in this live session, we answer all your questions about traveling in New Zealand. But if you miss the live session, you can always put your questions in the comments section of any of our YouTube videos and we pull those questions together for the live session and we answer those as well. Here you go. The first two minutes of the videos of the live session is always the same anyway. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. G Money is in the house. Uh, Grant says, Morena, this is G. How is it going? Another week down before the move when the border open. Uh, do you guys think plane tickets will be more or less expensive when the New Zealand border opens? Thanks. I think they're going to be less expensive just because competition will restart. So right now, uh, if you want to fly to New Zealand, there is literally only basically a New Zealand that sometimes does charter from here and there. So basically, the price tickets are as high as they're going to be. Um, I think it's going to take about like between six and 12 months after the border reopens to have prices starting stabilizing again. But for example, if I was to take some uh, example from the Cook Islands, which is probably the only country which is fully quarantine-free open to New Zealand because Australia still have a little bit of... Um, um, conditions. Yeah, conditions, and and there is a state like the state of Victoria, which has travel suspended and all that. So, if I was to take the Cook Island, which right now is opened, they are already starting to do some uh, sale on uh, plane tickets, and that only opened about a month ago. So, right now, some plane tickets are only about three hundred and thirty bucks. Uh, so, that's pretty good for uh, for a flight to the Cook Islands. So, that would be kind of like uh, what I'm thinking. So, what I'm thinking is at the beginning is going to be maybe a little bit cheaper than than it currently is, and then I think after between six to twelve months. Months, prices prices are going to come back to like some more normal level. Obviously, flight prices are extremely um, gas price dependent and, and all these things. So things may change dramatically from you know geopolitical events as well as resources and also the greed of some people speculating on the price of gas and all that. So we don't really know, but uh, yeah, that would be my take for now. Mm -hmm. Uh, and Anthony Comstock says, Morena from Rodeo, California. What does Morena mean? It means good morning in the Maori language, which is the indigenous language of New Zealand. Boom. Clay says, challenge accepted. He's going to try to mix gin and rosé and tell us how it is. Oh, I, yeah, cool. I don't know why I was almost 100% sure Clay will say that. <laughs> <laughs> we can always count on you, Clay. I'm actually quite surprised he didn't say, I'm pouring it down now. <laughs> it's in my breakfast cereal <laughs> as we speak. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, tell us, uh, tell us, oh, Hamad, this got you. Hmm. Uh, emoji Guys says hi with plenty of emoji, which is awesome. Uh, we'll have Extreme Talaota that says, Morena, 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 how are you doing, mate? Are you going to go refer some rugby today? Are you, are you here for a while? Uh, Grant says, also, please, will a landlord allow an expat to rent a 12 contract on a nine-month visa? You guys look great. 
Well, first up, I'd like to address the fact that we look great. I mean, yes. <laughs> we can't I let agree. that comment slide. I, mean, without I agree. <laughs> yes, for yes. sure. Um, okay. So, unlikely, very unlikely, you won't be able to get a 12 month co uh, uh, rent contract if you only have a nine month visa, uh, especially since the rental market in New Zealand right now is extremely short on supply. So, definitely, landlords have the peak of the litter uh, when it comes down to, pick, to getting mm. anyone. For them, they, they have tens and tens of applications, depending obviously on the town. But uh, for example, in Auckland, they literally are crawl, crawling, crawling, crawling under applications for uh, any um, any uh, place to let. I was looking for the word let. That's <laughs> a rare word I use. Yeah. So right now, that's extremely unlikely. Though. Well, that, then you will have to go a six month. Contract. That would be tough to get a place to rent to yourself for nine months. I'm just going to be 100% honest with you. Uh, it would be very yeah. tough. Except for, for instance, um, when I first arrived in New Zealand, I mean, I found places to rent for like when I was doing seasonal jobs, um, for instance, working yeah. in a ski field. But I mean, it's the type of thing where you're in a house share. Yeah, I mean, so that's house not be a place share. To yourself, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. You like the things you'll be able to find to rent easily are things where you're like basically a housemate in a, in a house share, but maybe that would be the steps you would have to take in order to, um, you know, uh, then be make sure you get your your visa sort of locked in so you can stay in New Zealand longer and then get a full house to yourself. But I do seem to recall that you mentioned you had a dog as well, so that might add another sort of, um, you know, another layer of like a bit of a, a, a uh, what's the word? Uh, obstruction? Yeah, no, no, another obstacle. An because, obstacle, uh, that's it. Another letting with pets is also quite tough. Yeah, so that's also, it's unlikely, it would be hard to get a house share with a with a dog. Yeah. I, don't, I feel like having pets in a house share is really quite unheard of, uh, so from what I know in New Zealand. Yeah. But there are options to do that once you have your own, you know, renting your own house to yourself. But then yet, yet again, you do have the obstacle of, the visa situation so yeah that is going to be um that is going to be quite a challenge yeah yeah um, and, and and landlord won't really care about whatever you tell them they're just going to look at the paper if the paper mm -hmm. says you can stay nine months they're just going to uh, you know they're going to consider you only staying nine months pretty much every renter in the world would tell you whatever you want to hear as a landlord in order to get the place they want so um it that doesn't really matter if you tell them the whole story that you're coming here to move to new zealand and all that thing they would not care. Yeah. They would just look at the paperwork and say it says nine months on there. They will just say they will just consider you staying nine months, and therefore they will probably prefer someone which is here for a longer period of time. Yeah. Um, sorry for the bad news. Obviously, it's yeah. not ever fun. Adil says, "Kia ora from South Africa. How are you doing, Adil?" Um, Mo, uh, Emoji guy says hi to Wheatbix. This is Wheatbix for any of you who have not met Wheatbix just yet. Clay has an interesting question. He, say, oh, he says, I was stuck on a TikTok binge earlier this morning. Your life sucks. Uh, <laughs> don't get stuck on a TikTok binge. Oh, God. It is mind melting. Uh, and then he says, I came across one that says New Zealand has a Grand Canyon as a map zoomed into the North Island. Have you been? A Grand Canyon? I mean, there is some canyons in New Zealand, like the White Cliff Canyons around the Manawatu Gorge, for example. Uh, you know, there are things that could be considered as canyons. The, the Putanguru yeah. pinnacles look a little bit exactly. like canyons. That's, yeah. what I, that's what I was thinking as well. Yeah. So you, you could consider the Putanguru pinnacles as canyons. But like the one canyon that we think is the White Cliff one near uh, River Valley in, um, in, in the Manawatu Gorge. But that's basically it. It's definitely not like a Grand Canyon. I have been to the actual Grand Canyon in the US and it's nowhere near that. But yeah, it's, it, I think it was just a, a really kind of grabby, attention grabby kind of video, yeah. which uh, TikTok is full of it. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Bit of, by the way, we're on TikTok. You can find us at NZ Booking Guide. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless self plug. <laughs> oh man, I just I just don't really get it. I don't think we're gonna stay on TikTok for too long. We'll see, we'll see what happens, but yeah. I don't I don't really understand it. Maybe I'm just I'm just getting too old. Yesterday we were at the party and there was a lot of kids on TikTok, and I I was I was confused. Um, switch to my age. Stephen D, mountain bike, says, Kia ora from Christchurch. How are you doing, Stephen? Hi. How is it going in Christchurch? Are you into mountain biking? And if yes, do you want to share some of the hot spots for mountain biking around Christchurch with us? Get some local tips right here. That'd be fun. Extreme Talata says, there's no league today. So oh, he's here for the whole time. Usual. Awesome. Gorika says, when will the New Zealand uh, open student visas? 
Well, there has this is the first question of the morning. We do receive these questions every single live session, but don't worry, guys, we have answers prepared for you. So there's no new official information. Um, um, there's no new official information for when the uh, borders are going to open and when the visas, for, especially student visas, are going to be processed, I'm afraid. So no new information on that yet. But for any updates that may come up, the best place to go is to the Immigration New Zealand website, which Robin's put the um, website address on the screen right now. So best to head over there for any of your visa queries and any updates for when visas will start processing again. But as far as we know, no new official information on when the visas will be processed just yet, I'm afraid. But if you do want to start planning your student trip to New Zealand on nzpocketguide.com, we do have a whole section which is all about studying. Um, studying. Mm. So we do have plenty of articles for you. So I'll show you how that works. You're just going to go on nzpocketguide.com right here. And then it's under work in New Zealand because a lot of students are coming also to work. And then there is a whole section right here, say study in New Zealand. And there's plenty of articles that will talk to you about all the different universities that you have as well as the English courses. And, and one of the most popular articles is the first week of arriving in New Zealand when you're an international student and we lay out everything that you need to do on your first week. And it's extremely useful. So maybe that's something you want to consider checking out um, while waiting for news of the New Zealand borders mm. opening. Absolutely. All right, moving on to... Uh, Grant says, yeah, we stayed the whole 12 months. Yeah, so I covered that while I was um, uh, talking about this stuff. Clay says, I had a look on the map and it seems to be close to Mount Tarawera. Oh, interesting. Well, we do have a video. If you want to uh, see a little bit how the Mount Tarawera uh, area looks like, we do have a video on the NZ Pocket Guides, uh, you know, on the YouTube channel uh, about us kind of climbing Mount Tarawera. So you can see kind of all around, but it's a volcanic area and volcanic areas don't necessarily have canyons. So it maybe just in between two months. I think, it, I, honestly, I think it was just BS. <laughs> you know, well, there might be some hidden, like on some private land somewhere. You know, like something that might look like a canyon. It's not the Grand Canyon. No, yeah, it, okay, it's not going to be the Grand Canyon, but um, yeah, it could be somewhere where it's on, you know, private land. A lot of the a lot of the land around um, Tarawera is like uh, local iwi land as well. So, I mean, for people to be able to go and access and see it themselves, it might actually not be. Um, you might not be able to do that but anyway moving on since we don't really know where it is let's let's move on <laughs> yeah all right who do we have then uh we do have kiwi loren uh, that is all the way in canada and she say hi robin laura and with bigs <laughs> here you go why in the world is back here you go it says good morning you guys i see with bigs is back sitting next to laura yes he was on the little holiday for one video last week yeah sometimes he likes to leave we, yes. we give him his uh holiday you know the holiday that he needs every single uh you know work work you need to have holiday when you are an employee don't you he's our employee he gets his work hours and his holiday hours and we we, are, we have a very fair system here with we Laura is gone. <laughs> okay, he say my cat is sitting next to me with three legs. Oh, no. uh, had a leg amputation uh, two days ago due to a tumor. Oh, that oh, sucks. Cool cat. Well, give her, give her a couple of strokes for us if that's okay. We thought about you. We went to shoot some videos in Lake Wotopunamu yesterday. Yeah. So we thought about you. Um, yeah, that was cool. Mm. Uh, oh, uh, Clay said he said he was stuck on the TikTok, so that was uh, against his uh, his own will. I'm yeah, guessing. Yeah, yeah, that, said, that can happen. Where you're just like, why am I still scrolling? <laughs> and he yeah. says that was a crack up when I said, by the way, we're on TikTok. Yeah, we well, you know. I just, <laughs> I just like to make a fun of ourselves sometimes. Mm. Kiwi Loren says, can you explain what canyoning is? I did the black water rafting in Waitomo, but I've heard about canyoning in other locations, and it seems interesting. Well, canyoning is basically the same than black water rafting. It just you go through places, it's just this time you are in a mini canyon rather than, you know, you can see the sky. That's basically the difference. <laughs> you can type canyoning and then NZ Pocket Guide, and you see us do two, at least, of those tools, at least yeah. two of those tools, and you have full videos of us doing it. So basically, you kind of crawl your way through a stream to try to go from point A to point B. That's basically what it is. You have obstacles such as waterfall drops, um, you know, you might um, do pools, some abseiling. Abseilings, yeah, those yeah. kind of things. So that, that's basically what canyoning yeah. is. It's, it's the same than blackwater rafting, except you're not in a cave. You can see the sky. Yeah. So that's... that's You're kind of using sort of the river 
as, and, and the canyon and everything around it as like nature's playground and you need to sort of make your way through it in, in obscene ways. Might need to you know yeah jump off waterfalls or do abseiling or sometimes people they'll have some setups for like <laughs> uh, yeah. and you know, there's sometimes <laughs> like because they obviously like the guides they they set up the areas for canyoning and they take uh tours there regularly they might set up even some zip lining and sort of crazy things to do there and you know so um yeah, there's lots of different canyoning around New Zealand. And we also do have an article on nzpocketguide.com uh, listing, I think, about 10 different canyoning locations. So if you want to check out that and see, yeah, what what type of where, where you can go canyoning and what sort of things they entail. You can we go really check have out an website. article on the website, really, about that. Yes. Damn, that's crazy. We have an article about everything. I know. On <laughs> I know. I'm just kind of like, really, did we? Yeah. <laughs> that's insane. Anyway, so, yeah. the site is right here. Go check it out. Uh, all right, who else is on the list? Where am I? Where am I? That's under Q Loren. Uh, emoji guy says for accommodation, I've already decided hostel for sure, private room with a long term rate. Yeah, that is definitely is pretty good. Nice. Uh, the issue for Grant is that he's going to come with his dog, so he's going to struggle with that as well. So he has a lot of things playing against him. But uh, for people that are coming in New Zealand for less than 12 months, hostels. Uh, long term rates is usually the much easier way to go for uh, for that. Yeah. Stephen D, mountain bikes is yes, good spots are Crocodile Bike Park, Bottle Lake Forest, and Adventure Park. All have nice walking tracks as well at those places. Now, that's oh. some good tips. Hey, Stephen D, if you want to talk about mountain biking around New Zealand and everything, we sometimes do kind of like little interviews of locals uh, about like a subject that they really like. So, if you're interested, flick me a message on Facebook. You'll find us at NZ Pocket Guide. Maybe we sit up on the Zoom together and we talk about mountain biking. Um, yeah, we've done, for example, if you see in the live chat, we have Clay right here. He talked to us about things to do with kids in Dunedin because he's from Dunedin. So it's always a cool thing to kind of interact with you guys. If you're interested, no pressure at all, but that'd be cool. Anyway, all those are really good recommendations. Crocodile Bike Park, Bike Park Bottle Lake Forest, and Adventure Park in Christchurch. I can vouch for Adventure Park. I've been there. It's a really cool place. I have not mountain bike there, but there's other things to do with Adventure Park. All right. Henry and Mecca, would you like to read what Henry says? Yes, um, they say, please, is the New Zealand border opening anytime soon? Because some of my friends' visa came out last month. Um, so, yeah, like I said earlier in this uh, live session, there's been no new official information on when the borders are going to open. <laughs> so, um, yeah, unfortunately, we can't give you any exact details right now. But if you do want to have a more sort of, um, you know, a more complex answer with, with more context, um, and we can give you, a, a, we have a much longer video on the subject on YouTube. So Robin's just put it up on the screen right now, how to search it, just search NZ border predictions. And you can check out our New Zealand border predictions video. And there we go into much more detail about the borders being closed and how we think the borders will open to people, um, you know, gradually um, as, as the virus hopefully gets under control. You can also check Immigration New Zealand's website, which has a lot of information as well. And we will update that video very soon. We are working on an update, but we just need more things to tell you guys. Yeah. Speaking of news, I'm going to take a quick break right here before I keep going with all the other questions. Speaking of news, there's a couple of news that came up this um, week in New Zealand. So people that were struck, st stuck in New Zealand with temporary work visas, such as the working holiday visa or the SSE visa, got an extension right now. And they got an extension, I think, all the way to December. So that gives them a little bit more leeway to stay here. And that helps address uh, some uh, industry shortages around the country as well. So here you go, New Zealand is not uh, forcing people to go back to unsafe places. They are working their way through that. And that's also explain why Immigration New Zealand is not really processing that many visas for people which are outside of New Zealand. They are working really hard on creating new visa extension and implementing those new visa extensions for all the people which have been stuck in New Zealand during these crazy COVID times. Mm. Um, all right, moving on to Grant Montgomery. He says, last question for the day. Doesn't have to be. We're here for another 40 minutes. So you can keep on picking your brain. He says, where do people live on nine months visitor visa with a dog? <laughs> well, the dog part is the really hard part, right? Because usually I would respond long-term in a hostel. That's definitely what I would respond. But long-term with a dog, honestly, I will try to find like Airbnb and stuff like that. But man, that's going to be expensive. Mm. But that's kind of like what the thing what I will think of. I mean, 
I mean, it's it may be absolutely crazy to say, but would you be able to kind of come to New Zealand and get your started without your dog? And then once you have your life started and you have your own home and all those kind of things, then you can bring your dog in. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, so maybe the first nine months when you get things settled, could you come without your dog? That will make your life so much easier because I don't know of any hostels that will allow you to have your dog no, there. No, there's only um, th it yeah. tends to be like even accommodations that allow their dog uh, that allow pets typically tend to be um, some holiday parks and some um, some motels, but that's, you know, only, only yeah, some of them. holiday park will work. So, you know, holiday if you get yourself a camper van or caravan and then you park yourself in a holiday park and mm. you get long-term rates right here, then yeah. you, will have, you will be able to have your dog. So, yeah, that, that's an option. That yeah, so work, if, yeah. yeah, so, yeah, so you could buy basically a motorhome and yeah. you know you you know you, your dog can basically live in the motorhome with you and obviously um the thing about new zealand as well that you need to know by having a dog that there are some places <coughs> that you won't be able to take your dog because of the sort of um the for protecting the native wildlife in new zealand so for instance you won't be able to go to many national parks with your dog you can only go to there's some um uh, Department of Conservation areas, um, such as forest parks, which have sort of usually a lenience where you can take your dog on a lead to the forest park. So just also bear in mind that there will be some restrictions on where you a can actually you take can your do, dog. Yeah. Yes. So usually people in New Zealand, like they walk their dogs in like public parks in cities and that sort of thing here. Um, so, yeah, just bear in mind when you're looking at places to walk or you know, to walk your dog or places to go. Uh, just bear in mind that there might, may be some restrictions when you are looking um, for whether you can take your dog or not. That was a good uh, good idea, the holiday park. I didn't yeah. think of that, yeah. SJ Park is here saying, long time not being here. Hello, guys. Have a great morning. Hello all the way to Korea, if I'm correct. Yeah. You're in Korea, right? Uh, how are you doing? Yes, that's been a while. Uh, Kiwi Loren says, right on, thanks. What uh, was it... Yeah, that's, that's what, what it it's. Oh, I can't read. Can you read that? <laughs> she it's said, "Right on, words. thanks." That's what it seems uh, like to me. Ah, you see, you struggle as well. Basically, like the rafting adventure, but outside. So fun. Did you have a favorite canyoning location? I am looking at Abel Tasman. So we didn't film. I mean, I've done Abel Tasman, but we didn't film it because I was well before we did New Zealand's biggest gap here. It is a really cool location to do, and it's run by a really cool. I think he's Dutch or some some it's, well, Dutch guy is 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 really fun. So yeah, that's a really cool one. I think I really like Queenstown because depending on the conditions and everything, they have a lot of different locations to play with. So I do like the canyoning in Queenstown. Yeah, that they're called Personally. Canyoning New Zealand, I yes. think that company. Yeah. yeah. Um and but I will say if I had to pick my favorite, like hands on the heart, like awesome people and everything like that, that would be the uh Sleeping Gods Canyon team, which is with Canyon NZ. Uh, which Canyo is NZ. Yeah, Canyo yeah. NZ. So you put Canyon and then you put a Z at the end. Mm. And they are in the Coromandel area and they're really, really, really awesome. And the, the area is fantastic. It's really big as well. So give you, because you've done already canyoning in kind of like really confined space because you've done black water rafting. This is really grand spaces. So you will have an extremely different experience rather than doing <coughs> something quite similar. So yeah, I would be looking at Canyon NZ if I were you. Mm. Um, and then decide, honestly, you, you do what? You know, you feel like doing obviously, and what works with you, yeah. itinerary. But here you go. Kalo is back. How are you doing, Kalo? And she says, "Hi guys." See, I remember now. Yeah. Um, she says, "Hi, hi guys. I've been looking into staying at Milford Sound Lodge. It's pricey. It's about six hundred and fifteen dollars. Yeah, it is very expensive over there. They're the only one that can charge whatever they want." Yeah. And it says, "Do you guys think it's worth it? Will you stay in Tia now?" All right, so if you want to check out Milford Sound Lodge, literally, we stayed there when we explored Milford Sound. So if you check out the New Zealand's Biggest Gap Year episodes and you check out the one uh, in Milford Sound, you will see us kind of starting all day and finishing all day in Milford Sound Lodge. So watch, like, all the Milford Sound stuff and you'll have a bit of an understanding of what, what all the places and everything. Um, so they have some fantastic facilities, right? Since they, um, since they, they really, they have a lot of, money to play with so their facilities are really really nice however it really depends how long you want to stay in Milford Sound but if you want to do the cruise and one other activity you could fit that in one day and stay in Tiana and pay a tenth of that price of accommodation right mm. so I will do that if you really want to stay I will only I basically I will never consider an overnight in Milford Sound I will always consider two nights. So it's like, if you are that dedicated to Milford Sound, you stay two nights. 
And yeah. then, then at that point, it's worth it to kind of like actually spend that money and everything. If you just want to stay for one night, I will just do all the activities I can in one day and enjoy it. But you yeah. make it a long day, but at least you save like so much money. I mean, you could you could have the accommodation and pay for skydive with that amount of money. I mean, it's, it's huge, I think, yeah. Um, I also think that maybe doing an overnight cruise might also, might even be cheaper than staying in Milford yeah, Sound Lodge. I mean, true. I can't 100% say that because I don't have the prices right now, but it is worth looking into. So another way that you can stay in Milford Sound overnight is to um, book onto one of the overnight cruises. For instance, Real Journeys does an overnight cruise where you stay in a cabin on board and basically you... And actually stay in the fjord of Milford Sound overnight, which is pretty awesome. I think they also have um, kayaks and they they go and do, they do extra activities that the normal cruises wouldn't normally do. So that's worth considering as well. Um, we do have an article actually on nzpocketguide.com, which lists um, 10 accommodations in Milford Sound. Admittedly, most of them are campsites, yes. but that does also list... Um, Milford Sound Lodge, the overnight cruise, and there is actually another overnight cruise, but it's um it's more uh, catered to the like luxury markets. It's kind of like quite suave, and it even has like a, a spa pool on top of, of the boat and stuff. So there is a luxury option there as well. So just go check out that website to get some. I mean that uh, that page to get some more information on the different types of lo uh, accommodations in Milford Sound. All right. It why in the world says I saw you guys scuba dive in the New Zealand's biggest gap here. I think it was in Coromandel. Did you ever do anything like that anywhere else in New Zealand? Yes, absolutely. We scuba dive in the Bay of Islands. We scuba dive in Paul Knight Island, and there's videos of all of that. Mm. Um, we attempted to scuba dive in Milford Sound many times uh, to go see that black coral, but sadly, it's extremely hard. Uh, yeah, to, it's to very get weather, weather dependent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, where else did we scuba dive? I think in New Zealand, that's the yes. only place. We, are, we did, obviously, we did scuba dive in the South Pacific, such as Tonga, Nui, and Fiji, and all that, because you know we do really like scuba diving. Yeah, it is a fun thing to do. But yeah, uh, Paul Knight Islands. If you can uh, check check this video out, it's phenomenal. There is so mm. much happening in that video. It's yeah. really cool. Actually, I had to make it a two part. I was going to say it was, became a two parter because we also got to snorkel with the seals. Seals, yeah, yeah. yeah. Jump off the boat. They were just like kind of too playful. Yeah. That's one of the benefits of actually going to do that trip in winter because the seals are actually only usually there yeah. in Paul Knight Islands in we in winter and. Uh, yeah, we got to do that. That's pretty awesome. And Laura loved the ride in. She definitely loved it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Emoji guy says, Quench, question, sorry. Printing documents and copying some papers. Where do you do it? Do you have some print shop, especially for copying and printing in New Zealand? Yeah, there's many places you can do that. Uh, for example, the first thing that comes to mind is a shop called the Warehouse Stationery. So it's kind of a stationery store. Um, and uh, yeah, they have a copy over there. You pay like, I think it's five cents for black and white copies and everything like that. Or, you know, you give them a US USB stick and then they, they print stuff that way. Um, so yeah, very easy to uh, sort that out. There are shops like that everywhere in New Zealand. So it's quite easy. Another way to do that is that you can go to your local library. So there is plenty of libraries around and they will be able to help you out with that as well. Yeah. So here you go. Clay says, um, he's actually talking to you, Grant, about some stuff about the dogs. So he says, a few of the holiday parks and motels I've been to say that they allow dogs. But in actual fact, you get there and they really mean that they are allowed on site for a walk. But otherwise, it stays in the car. Oh. So we don't take dogs anymore. Interesting. Because, yeah, I've actually seen um, a yeah. lot of motels and holiday parks saying you know, we accept pets and stuff like that. But yeah, interesting that you've actually had that experience um, where not all of them have actually uh It is tough to travel around using pets. Yeah, yeah, it is. So, yeah. Would you like to read what Why in the World say? Why in the World says, by the way, I went to the Bluff Oyster Festival this year and did a vid on my seafood channel. You guys might be interested to see it. I'll email you the link. Yeah, nice. that would be awesome. We'll have a look at that. So, yeah, so if you guys don't know why in the world, he's a local from Christchurch and he does a lot of videos about traveling in New Zealand and everything like that as well, like just showing some like local experiences. So, yeah, if you want to see him slapping oysters, apparently that's the yeah. latest thing on his channel. So check it out. Yeah, we did watch a video a while ago of him going to the Wild Food Festival in Hokkaido. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's all about the food. All about the food. 
Okay, Clay say, oh, no, 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 we did that. That's okay. Uh, SJ Park says, doing great. Sorry if this is a repetitive question, but any news on the border opening for vaccinated people? That's okay. Uh, we, we, um, yeah, I mean, we always know what to answer to this question, which is unfortunately always the same. Um, that the borders are still closed to New Zealand and there has been no new information of when they're going to open, even to people that have been vaccinated, because the fact is, like, the whole of the New Zealand population hasn't been vaccinated just yet either. Um, and, yeah, if you want to find some more information um, of us talking about basically answering this question for longer, um, Robin did have on the screen a second ago how to find that. I do it again, I do it again. Um, no, I don't. I do. <laughs> how to I do how to find that on YouTube by just searching NZ Border Predictions. And you can get a more sort of lengthy video of us talking about when we think the borders will open and how we think the borders will open to which countries, um, hopefully, as the as the coronavirus gets um, under some sort of control. Yeah. Yes. By the way, guys, if you do find this video useful, make sure to hit like. It's a great free way for you to say thank you for all our hard work. All right, so a quick catch up on what is happening uh, to the channel. So we're not doing any more of the quizzes for now. The, the videos are really not that popular. So so why do that? We so do some different stuff. No quizzes this week. So no quizzes this week. However, there is plenty of stuff coming up. So this month we are going to be doing a few more product reviews because, well, we've done a couple of product reviews and you guys seem to uh, kind of really like it. Uh, the latest one that we did was the one with the wireless modem. And uh, yeah, you guys had really cool response to that. That was that was quite fun. So we decided to do some more. So we will be doing a couple of uh, reviews this month. So keep an eye out for that. Some product that we actually do really, really do like. So obviously try to kind of only pick product that we do like. Like I don't want to give any exposure to things yeah. we don't like. So spoiler alert, if we do a review, it's not to trash the product because I already done some research <laughs> about it. And I already kind of like, okay, I like this thing. I like to get it. I like to review it. And so, of yeah. course, they are all relative, relevant to um, traveling in New Zealand as well. I know the, I know the so story. I can't review the latest Nintendo Switch that's going to be announced to, today. <laughs> no, what? no, no, you can't. No. And you can't um, do the VP, the latest VPM uh, um, thing. VPN? Yes, yes, yes. To be fair, I, I think actually VPNs are quite useful when you travel no, no, around. We, we, no, the, oh, when you travel around. Yes, I, I oh, think yeah. it's really useful. Well, really? because you access a ton of different Wi-Fi networks, right? Yeah. And we're not about to sell you some No, we're VPN, not. We're not. So you know. We're not sponsored by any of the VPN stuff. That, that's all the YouTube. That's basically yeah. every other YouTube channel. It's like they're either doing that or the um, man, manscaping. Yeah, or, 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 or Squarespace. Or Squarespace, yeah. 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 Anyway, I'm just going to say something about VPNs, right? Because I actually, yeah. I actually think it, it, it's a funny point, but I actually do think that when you travel, it's quite useful to have a VPN because you connect to so many different Wi-Fi. Some of them might be compromised. Maybe you will be you, some of the information that is uh, on your computer or on your phone will be accessible to others on the same network. So using a VPN will kind of help you with that. And also, when you start traveling around, you will notice that you know you have access to different shows and everything like that depending on your geolocation for a lot of your apps and the way you watch stuff so having a v vpn is an extra layer of security and an extra layer of convenience so i actually do think that traveling when traveling having a vpn is a good thing with that in mind let me transition to not recommending <laughs> you any of them because we're not sponsored by vpn i just think it's a good thing that's yeah, it well yeah. if any vpn uh no, marketers no, are watching no, I, I mean no, this guy no i am this not guy selling can sell you some vpn can sell the only VPN. reason i wouldn't sell vpn is just because i'm sick of hearing about yeah. vpns <laughs> online it drives me nuts anyway let's see what's <laughs> back in the live chat <laughs> Uh, no, I was, I was okay. Yeah, we'll go yeah. back to live and uh, keep going to what happens uh, this week on the channel as mm. well. Um, yeah, Clay is reassuring you, uh, Grant, some, uh, some accommodation provider do actually uh, uh, allow pets, and uh, yeah, that's true. Like when usually they say pets are allowed, they are, but some of them are a little bit kind of like naughty and they say, yeah, they're allowed on premises, but you can take them in a room, you can do this, you can yeah. do that. So, yeah, yeah, um, no, I agree with all that. Uh, cool. Moving on, Adil says, uh, I am well, thank you. Congratulations on reaching 24,000 subscribers. Ooh, yes, that's what you. I wanted to say, but Laura just stopped me and talked about VPN. But yes, <laughs> guys, we reached 24,000 subscribers this week. So that's really awesome. I'm really stoked about it. And if you guys want to tell your friends about us so we can reach 25,000 subscribers even faster, that'd be awesome. 
But yeah, I do know that at the moment it's kind of like we are not growing as fast as we usually are growing because you know no one's traveling around New Zealand, so no one's really looking at what we're doing. Yeah, we are like on the website and on the on the on the on the YouTube channel. You know, it's winter in New Zealand, so the locals are not traveling that much. And on top of it, there is COVID going on. Yeah. It is as low as it can get. So, it's so a bit, thanks, yeah. you guys, for actually sticking with us in this time when nobody typically is traveling. So it's good to see that some people are still watching this channel despite all that. Yes, <laughs> you guys are awesome. SJ Park say thank you. I love it. Clay says, Rosé and Jean Mix will be flowing uh, when you guys can finally answer that question directly. Differently. Different. Oh, yeah, yeah but the, open, the border openings, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that might might make answering that question a little more fun. Yeah. Okay, you know what, Clay? When the border opening is starting to happen, buy yourself a bottle of gym and a bottle of rosé. Have it nearby on the couch every Sunday. The day we tell people the border is opening now, got to take a shot. Go to well, we should make a. Oh, I think we've already discussed on this channel before that we should make a drinking game out of the amount of times yeah. that people ask when the borders are opening. And no, 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 because <laughs> then he's going to be absolutely hammered at like <laughs> seven past eight. Yeah, well, you uh, know, okay. Grant says, You guys are so positive, thank you so much for not saying it's impossible. It's not impossible, it, it's, it's just going to be a challenge, yeah. but you know. I think Laura is what right. What is life without a challenge? Yeah. I think Laura is right. Holiday the park is your way to go for uh, for starting. Yeah, I think she's correct. Live in a, a nice motorhome for the first nine months while you get yourself sort of set up. Um, we lived in a nice motorhome for for about nine months in New Zealand, actually. Yeah. Um, That's a spoiler alert around. for the last three months of New Zealand's biggest gap year. Make, make sure that make sure that you do get yourself a you know a good motorhome. Don't go too cheap on it <laughs> because yeah, uh, so, some. As was uh, was had all sorts of problems, really. So yes. make sure that you do a good inspection. And uh, I'm, I'm sure you, you sound like you're probably a smarter guy when it comes to cars and stuff than we are. So I don't know. I can, I can just tell Grant knows his stuff. Well, you know, he's G money. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Clay says VPN is great. Cheaper subscription and more options uh, for more TV that we don't need to all watch. Well, here wow. you go. Maybe you should sell uh, exactly. VPN, Clay. Yeah. You don't need to watch TV. That's true. We don't watch TV either. So, yeah. No. But, yeah, we don't no. have an aerial, which really confuses all our neighbors. They're like, you don't have an aerial? Like, how do you watch TV? Like, when we redid the roof of our house, we asked the guys to literally take off the aerial because we literally never, you know, we never even plugged the TV. And they got absolutely confused. Their eyes become so big. I'm like, why? It's like, well... Most people that are going to move after us are going to use, you know, the internet to get their TV. And we literally never turned on the TV. And it was absolutely shocked. And our neighbors, which is like, you know, 80 years old, is absolutely completely confused by the yeah. fact that we don't watch TV. And yeah, they keep on asking us, you know, years after years, did you watch this on TV last night? <laughs> and oh, we never, no. never, ever. Okay, Emoji Guy says, I'm a bad swimmer. Is there any swimming lesson facilities for adults? And is it available for tourists? Interesting. That's a good question. So pretty much any public uh, community swimming pools or public swimming pools will have some sort of swimming lessons. And pretty much all of them will have a lesson, which is at least once a week, uh, which would be for adults. Uh, I mean, the couple of local swimming pools that we know in, in a couple of different towns nearby where we live have that. So yes, it's absolutely available. Now, is it available for tourists? I'm not 100% sure. To be fair, I mean, I, I wouldn't see them kind of you showing up and wanting to pay the $5. I mean, it's really cheap. But uh, you wanting to pay the five dollars to do a one lesson, uh, I wouldn't see them say no. Um, no, I'm sure they wouldn't you know? check for visas. Yeah, they anything, wouldn't say I like... need your visa right now. It, yeah. it would be absolutely fine. The one obstacle that you may find is that sometimes they may just only like sell you a pass of like five lessons or ten lessons, you know, and like sell you a uh, cardboard card and they just do a clip on it. Mm. So maybe that would be the one kind of um, hindrance that we'll see. But I'm not, I'm not obviously 100 percent sure on that. I, I, I will say you absolutely can show up. You know, we've been to our local pools quite often uh, when we were trying to exercise back in the days. and <laughs> <laughs> But then it became winter and it was cold. Yeah. So we said no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, you have, you can, absolutely, yeah. And uh, yeah, New Zealand is a great place to learn swimming. Don't, don't, don't go at the beach unless you know swimming because uh, there is a lot of rip and stuff like that. And Yeah, it don't. is very handy to know how to swim if you're in New Zealand. I mean, there's plenty of things that you can do in New Zealand without swimming. There's 
um yeah many really awesome think like tours and stuff to do and even some tours that do involve a bit of water some of them only involve water up to your knees and stuff so even if you're not necessarily a good swimmer you always tell your guide that that's the case that you're not very good at swimming but they always gear you up with all the right equipment and um yeah all that sort of stuff Clay says, should make a drinking game? I thought it already was. I've watched <laughs> you start many live streams, but often I don't remember them finishing. <laughs> my, oh my. Yeah. <laughs> We're ruining his Sundays every week. Okay. Or making them better. <laughs> Would you like to say what Kalo um, says? Yes, Kalo says, have you guys stayed at Mount Cook Hermitage Hotel? Um, we actually haven't stayed at the hotel itself. We've been to the hotel because there's a lot of activities and tours that sort of depart there and there's that a museum yeah. And stuff. yeah there's a museum and a there there's um yeah planetarium and there's also about three different restaurants there <laughs> as well so what when you're staying in the mount cook village you often are um spending a lot of time going to the hermitage hotel for one reason or the other and um, but when we stayed in mount cook we've stayed in um i think it's just called mount cook lodge yes there's a lot of accommodations that all sound the same in the, in their names. It's, it's like, like Mount Cook Lodge, Mount Cook Retreat, Mount Cook Hotel, Mount Cook. So it's kind of like, which one is it already that we stay at yeah. multiple times? So, so yeah. there is, um, so Mount Cook Lodge, if that is the correct name, but Mount Cook Lodge is actually owned by the um, Hermitage Hotel, but it just uh, offers cheaper rooms than what's in the hotel. So we decided to stay there because, you know, you can't always pay top yeah. dollar everywhere you go. Yeah, we checked out the place as well. So yeah. you know, we did we did check out some rooms and everything. It, it, it's it's obviously like kind of like your luxury option. Yes. In Cook, so it's quite nice. Um, you know, it's really cool the fact that they have like restaurants and they do have all those activities just literally right on site. But you can save a lot of money by staying in one of the other accommodation and literally it's within walking distance to be able to go to the Hermitage Hotel as well. Um, so yeah, but if you do want to treat yourself, it is a fantastic location and, and uh, you know, the, the facilities over there, you know, as a as rooms and everything top notch really yeah. nice so yeah absolutely we would definitely recommend that mm. um you know i can't say i literally put my butt in the bed but i've pretty much done everything else you can be doing while staying there yeah and uh, i can tell you it's pretty good yeah and in terms of the facilities in your hotel room it's very much the standard of any international type style hotel so you know you'd have your you have your ensuite and your tv and everything it's just all all basically the basic things you get in the hotel some of the high, you know some of the like higher grade um rooms have a balcony so you get to soak in those amazing views but yeah um yeah a little bit more information on the hotel what does clay say clay says would you ever have a crack at a guided hike up mount cook i'd have a crack at yeah that. i absolutely would do that that, yeah. that sounds pretty cool why well, are you guiding soon <laughs> is <laughs> yeah. that uh, is that an offer right i here? mean yeah we, we need a guide obviously first so uh yeah, yeah. No, but yeah, absolutely. That, that sounds like a pretty cool thing to do. Yeah. All right. So um, while you guys are asking us some more questions, let's keep going with what is happening this week. I'm trying to stay on track to finish that sentence, despite the fact that I lose my train of thought every two seconds. So yesterday we published a cool video. I mean, something quite different. It's like mistake for first timers in New Zealand. So it's basically the, the mistake that we've done. It's kind of very candid video. It's kind of like, listen, this is this is why I screwed up when I came in. So what about you guys watch this video and don't screw them up? So it's kind of it's a different kind of style of videos and everything. But, you know, we thought that'd be cool. Now, what else are we going to be working on? We are going to give you, uh, we're going to do something kind of like more like, like did you know? So um, it's things you didn't know about places and everything. So we're going to be doing a video about uh, things you didn't know about the wildlife in New Zealand, which I think is going to be quite cool. Uh, keeping with like the life lesson learned, since we've done the mistakes for first timer, we're also going to be doing a video with the 12 worst travel advice ever for New Zealand. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're here to give you always really good travel advice. This time we'll give you some terrible one. Yes. Uh, so, yeah, so that's going to be quite, kind of interesting. Uh, what else are we? What else are we work? Oh yeah, some ways to stay warm when camping around New Zealand because that's pretty seasonal right here. Yeah, it and is winter in New Zealand. Yeah, right it now. is winter right in New Zealand. So yeah, so we're going to be working on all those things. Plus, on top of that, what I mentioned before, doing some of the reviews, and we're also working on gathering some information and some intel, like you know, we're spying on stuff <laughs> to uh, work on a new updated version of our prediction for the borders opening in New Zealand, but. You know, honestly, the one that we posted like five or six months ago, it's still valid what we think. So 
well, we'll see. We'll yeah. see what happens. So there is quite a lot of uh, of uh, different videos coming up on the channel, and also I don't know if you have checked our Facebook and Instagram page lately, but I try to do a few different things now on Facebook and Instagram. So if you want to find us on Facebook and Instagram, that'd be awesome. It's at NZ Pocket Guide. And yeah, I'm trying to do a few different things for you guys as well. So we're taking this COVID time to do a lot of different stuff. Laura is also working on updating nzpocketguide.com a ton. Like Liti, she's been working a ton, a ton on that. Mm -hmm. And with a bit of luck, we may even take you to some of the South Pacific Island at some point. Soon. No, <laughs> not soon. At some point. I can't say yeah. the word soon. I was no. thinking about saying the word soon. I was like, no. Nothing at is some soon. Point. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get you guys to guess at some point which one we're going to. When, uh, when we have everything signed up and ready to go. Yeah. All right. Clay says, have you ever been to the face on the side? Have you ever seen, oh, the, seen face? the face? I can't read. I've spoke too much. Yeah. So Clay says, and, and have you seen the face on the side of Mount Cook also? Um, we have fl done scenic flights around Mount Cook, but I don't think we were ever pointed out to the face or told us... And no one showed us. I assume you mean like a smiley face, like a person's face, yeah. not the, the actual like the face of the mountain. So, yeah, um, unfortunately, we missed that clay. So, um, yeah, I guess. You well, do you remember during New Zealand's biggest gap year? What was it that we were trying to find a clay in a, uh, like a, sorry, a face in a clay cliff? So we have seen a face in. No, um, we haven't. That, oh. did not, that, that did not happen. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Right there's the, on the way to, I think it's Fir Firinaki. Uh, oh, Firinaki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it Firinaki Beach? Is Maybe. that what it's called? I think it is, yeah. Um, and sort of between between um, Farewell Spit and F Fir uh, Farareki. Farareki Beach. One of those things. Um, so on that road there, it's, there's it's a sign saying... In Golden Bay area. Yeah, in Golden Bay. And there's a sign saying, like, I, I quite, can't quite remember what it says, but it's sort of like, be, there's a bearded man <laughs> in the, the in the cliffs over Baloney. there. Baloney. So we were looking into the cliffs and trying to take a photo of, like, to see if we could see this bearded man's face and we i do remember that we ended up drawing on on top of the uh on top of the photo absolutely to try and see if we could draw a face out of anything but yeah no we didn't see it but i think maybe if somebody you know that's why you need a guide sometimes who knows the area well and could be like there there's the face like see that <laughs> bit there and we're just like uh, our i guess our own eyes are not very good at interpreting um beautiful faces on rocks i'm afraid that's not one of our strong suits. Emoji guy says, I'm a good mountain climber, but I'm a bad swimmer. Interesting. We've been meeting a lot of actual climber, like rope climber and everything lately. Mm. So yeah, we are. We may learn some skills from them. Or maybe we just may just have a few beers and learn nothing from them. But <laughs> More likely. <laughs> yes. But yeah, we've been uh, meeting a lot of mountain climbers lately, which yeah. is quite cool. Claire says, it's on my bucket list and maybe one day, uh, but it's a really pricey and not to mention it's risky. I didn't realize how often it claims uh, until I looked into it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it does. It, it does. I mean, any kind of like high altitude mountaineering is always very dangerous, especially yeah. since it's not a mainstream thing to do. Arpit was asking stuff about Australia and then he was like, no, I'm going to retract my message. So you did. Mm -hmm. dun, okay. dun, dun. We'll never know. We'll never yeah. know the full story. Clay says he's going to send us a photo. A helicopter pilot find it some times ago. Okay, okay. yeah, that'll be fun. <laughs> send it to me. I will, I will check that. I'll get you guys to judge to see if uh, that is uh, that exists. Uh, emoji guys says the 10 biggest mistake for first time. Uh, 100, 100. Emo emoji and says, well <laughs> yeah. done. That's nice. Yeah. Thank you very much for that. Well... If you do like it, share it so more people see it. Yeah. That is always nice. Clay just sent a picture of the canyon as well. Oh, yeah. Do you want and to then what Jeff says? Jeff Godsey says, can you recommend any Facebook pages? Um, for, for example, in my area, we have a Facebook page called Lunch in the Gump. Um, it's where people go and talk about the restaurants that they visited. Uh, so, yeah, there are Facebook pages, maybe not specifically about that niche, of um, the restaurants that they visited. Uh, however, there are Facebook pages in New Zealand ar in around um, different areas of the country. Like that, you'll you'll find like sort of a uh, like a, a town name community pages, those sort of things. Yeah. So if you're in the same town or like a small town, then you can sort of connect with people through those sort of community pages. But in terms of sort of um, specific 
niches or interests that you might be interested in or obviously interested well, we, in we do like we do like for example if you're looking for like cheap eats and stuff like that we do have a lot of recommendation on the site i mean you know we go to a lot of places that's literally what we do as a job so mm. you know I, I i can't really come up with a with with a facebook page that would do that but you know we do that quite a lot if you go on inside pocket guide we do have so many recommendations for you i mean you'd be overwhelmed by the amount of choice that you have everywhere yeah. you go but if you're just oh looking gosh. for Facebook pages on on specific interests, there's like yeah. backpacking in New Zealand, there's uh, hiking in New Zealand. You know, you can you can find in terms of New Zealand, like certain interests in New Zealand. There's a lot of Facebook yeah. pages for those. So yeah, I mean, uh, at this point, just have a search on Facebook for yeah, so, you know, whatever we, you're interested in. Yeah, so we part of like some Facebook groups, for example, which you know is like for planting trees around and everything like that. So we part of those those kind of groups that you know it's our interests. And so, so yeah, so you have Facebook with all kind of interest. I just can't really recommend one about uh, the restaurants just mm. because it's not something that we, we will use a lot since, you know, it's kind of our job, right? So we go to places, we try them, we write it on NZ Pocket Guy. That's kind of like yeah, what that's we the, do, yeah. That's mainly the platform we would yeah. use for that. Yeah. But yeah, other people would maybe. <clears throat> yeah, actually, it. Jeff, I'm going to show you, uh, I'm going to show you something um, interesting for you i'm going to share the screen right now so you should be able to see my screen mate and um if you do look at uh for example um nations and if you go on travel style there is always the the the, the category foodie right here and so you will have every destination guide specially curated for foodies and we will have that for activities accommodations and trip ideas as well so you know you have the things to do in wellington for foodies things to do in wanaka for foodies the foodie guide to wanaka so you will have every places in new zealand like pages and pages of guides for you uh you see more than four pages worth of guides see auckland and all that specially tailored for foodies um you will have sending the accommodation more tailored for foodies so like the places where either you can cook for yourself or have some really really good restaurants i think for foodies as well you can go for foodies here and that's our take on like the best activities to do and for trip ideas even better you if you really are a foodie jeff and you're like mm, yeah i want some good foodie trip to new zealand you click on trip ideas and then literally we have the itinerary tailored for if you are a foodie so you have like an entire itinerary of 30 days around new zealand if you're foodie, or 21 days or 14 days and we will go day by day where to stay why to do and all that so you have your entire itinerary day one day two all the way to 30 so that's a lot of content <clears throat> sorry i'm struggling right now and uh, yeah it's a lot of content for you all about foodies so i hope that was useful to you um but yeah when it comes down to facebook group i'm not 100 sure and also i don't know if uh you know like a lot of facebook group are basically kind of like you know a lot of time it is you know the owners that kind of promote their own stuff and everything like that so yeah yeah okay what is beverly saying I need beverly some water. says thanks for making your videos and making them available to us we have questions i know you probably have a video that will teach me about it um, you are a fabulous resource. Oh, thanks for the kind words, Beverly. Nice. Yeah. So, Beverly, are you mostly usually consuming our content just through YouTube, or are you also looking at the website? I'm always kind of interested because, like, I'm more of a YouTube kind of person. Laura is more of a kind of uh, website kind of person. Mm. She likes reading. So, like, I don't know if people are really doing both, and so I'm always kind of interested with that. Yeah. So Kiwi Lauren says, I'm eligible for uh, my second COVID vaccine dose next Thursday. Ooh. We'll start saving up for my trip back to New Zealand again for the new year. Did I tell you I moved all my dollar over to retirement savings? Ooh, very, um, very adult of you. Wow. <laughs> Adulting is just <laughs> impressive sometimes. Yes. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. Um, well, you know, you're probably going to take some of that dollar to pay for a trip to New Zealand, let's be honest. Can you Moving take on. it back out of your retirement? <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Jeff says, sweet, I just started looking at your website. First impression is that it's very cool. Thank you oh, very cool. much, mate. Well, check it out. Tell us. Uh, tell us what you think. At the bottom of each article, there is a question that says, was this article useful? And you can click, yes, it was useful, or no, it needed improvement. If there is something that you think we could have done better on it, seriously click no. It doesn't make us upset. And it opens a little box, which is completely anonymous. So we won't even know there is you, uh, Jeff, or even Beverly, or Clay, or any one of you guys. We don't even know there is you guys. You can sign if you want uh, to tell us there is you. But we don't even know there is you. And you can give us your constructive feedback so we can 
kind of keep on improving the website. So it's, it's always cool. Um, Beverly says she look at the website too. Nice, interesting. Cool. I, I, li I like to know, like, to, I don't know. I like the psyche of people and how they research a trip. I don't know why. It's something that intrigues me. Arpit Go, 1st of January 2021, says, Hey, guys. <laughs> Should we visit Australia or New Zealand with an intention of doing adventurous activities there? Also, what is the least amount of days we sh should we arrange for two person? All right. Uh, I think I'll take this question because I've been to both. So I've done a working holiday in Australia. So I stayed uh, for an extended personal period of time in Australia. And obviously, I've done it in New Zealand. And I've been here for 11 years. So, you know, that may help you. So my opinion, and that's very biased, obviously, you should absolutely choose New Zealand. Um, the reason why I think you should choose New Zealand is because both New Zealand and Australia have fantastic things to offer, for sure, right? But the good thing about New Zealand is that it's much smaller. So you can go from point A to point B much faster. You can explore much more. You can do much more activities. New Zealand is super famous for being able to do so many things along the way while you travel around, around New Zealand, rather than in Australia, where you're going to be in a city such as Sydney or Melbourne, which are two great cities. But in between, there is pretty much nothing. It's going to be a lot of long drive with not much happening. While well, in New Zealand, even the journey will be part of the adventure. Now, when it comes down to how much time you should you uh, have for two people traveling around New Zealand, it's really up to how much time you can spare from your work and also how much money you can spend. <clears throat> if you are able to take yourself a month, it is a fantastic time to travel in New Zealand. It's a fantastic amount of time to spend there. And just a couple of seconds ago, you saw me showing the website, uh, NZ Pocket Guide. And on the trip ID section, we do have itineraries already done for you. So if you were to go to um, the website and actually go on the trip ID section, which I'm going to show you again. So it's here, trip IDs. You can select which amount of time you have for New Zealand. So let's say one month, you know, 30 days, maybe a little too much for you, which is too much for many people, but totally worth it. So let's go for 21 days. Then you do have uh, you do have some some itineraries already pre-made for you right here. So you have family, budget, luxury, honeymoon, and foodie. So we'll go for budget this time. Just why not? And you have a full itinerary all done for you. So I will suggest that you read through that and you see if that is action-packed enough for you. Otherwise, just change kind of different um, different uh, uh, you know settings on yourself uh, for looking at that. But yeah, we do have all the activities. Oh, what do I need to do? Cancel. What is mm -hmm. that? Why is Windows Defender wanting things? So, yeah. So, I will suggest you check those kind of things. And there is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot to do around New Zealand um, within only 21 days. So, that's basically, I will suggest between three to four, sorry, three to four weeks in New Zealand. And I will suggest you pick New Zealand over Australia. Yeah. But of course, because you said um, you asked what's the least amount of time. Um, is that what you said? The least yeah, amount of time? Yeah, the least amount of oh. day. So, we were, obviously, we would. Our personal opinion would be maybe two weeks would be the absolute least yes, we would yes. recommend. But as you saw on the website, we do have itineraries for week-long trips. Um, they're obviously more catered to just exploring one of the two islands because New Zealand is split between the North Island and the South Island. So those week-long itineraries only tend to explore one of those islands. But So we show you on the website that it is doable to do a trip in New Zealand for a week. But yeah, usually... Two weeks is kind of like the absolute minimum yeah. we would recommend. So yeah, I thought you said best rather than least. Uh, RP. So yeah, so Laura is right. But two yeah. weeks. Two but weeks the would best be always... would be a month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 My apologies. Yeah. Anyway, I hope that I sold you onto New Zealand. Um, seriously, look into the the live chat where people are saying watch some of our, more of our videos and you'll realize like oh my oh my there is a lot to do in New Zealand. Also, if you want some inspiration, you can check out New Zealand's biggest gap year. It's a series of videos in which we try to do three hundred and sixty five activities all around New Zealand in 365 days. And guess what? We achieve it, and we do even more than that. So adventure galore in New Zealand. Ta-da! Mm -hmm. There you go. Uh, <laughs> Kiwi Loren says, I had the trip all saved for, and then, bam, adult decision. Realized that I wasn't heading to New Zealand anytime soon. Well, as long as you can get the money out back from savings, yeah, go ahead. Just get the interest out of it. Oh, or, you can just, or you can just, yeah, like you said, save up for your next trip. That's that's what you said you're going to do. And, you know, that sounds like a smart thing to do. Yes. Also, you can decide to regress and not be an adult anymore on any point. <laughs> Why are you pushing that? that <laughs> Big an adult sucks. Yeah. Uh, Kelo, she says, I like both website and YouTube. The website is a great start, but YouTube comments really give honest opinion and advice. Nice. Cool. That's cool. Oh, well. And that's, that's a lot. Of, like a lot of people actually do kind of 
a little bit of both, right? They kind of go on the website and they go, okay, I don't know my research on the website, but, you know, if I have these 21 days itinerary, but this and this and this and that's not really my thing, what else could I put in there? And a lot of people kind of come to us and do that, and we do the, the full itinerary together mm. and everything. It's quite cool. YG Hassan says, hi, can you tell me about agriculture demand in New Zealand? Um... So uh, New Zealand does a lot of dairy, and uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, we are a travel channel here. I, I don't think we are really expert in kind of agriculture, and I feel like we wouldn't be able to give you a, a, a good, a good answer. in-depth yeah. answer. Yeah. So, so we we like to not mislead people on this channel. So we're here to talk about traveling in New Zealand mostly. So there is the Ministry of Agriculture that you can contact, for example, or you can check out their website, and they will tell you a lot about it. Um, so yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, picking kiwi fruit is fun. As, as a job, it's kind of fun. It's a teamwork. It's cool if you want to know something like that. But yeah, that, that's all we know about agriculture in New Zealand. Kiwi Loren says, now nah, I can save it back and again um, by the time I'll be heading back to Kiwi Land. Yeah, okay, you good. You probably still have quite quite a lot of time before the borders open, to be fair. So, yeah. Extreme Talauta from Tokoroa says, the website is pretty cool. I was looking at it two weeks ago. Oh, that's awesome. nice. Oh, look at Laura. Everybody's being nice to you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, YG says, I am doing right now a bachelor degree, I guess, uh, on agriculture from Pakistan, and I want to do a master from abroad, and I am looking at an option like New Zealand. Can you guide me? Uh, I watch your uh, videos regularly. Um, so, yeah, so there is plenty of different universities in New Zealand. So if you want to know which kind of cities are cool to live in as a student, you know, we do have videos for that, but that's more like kind of where we stop. We're not really education experts because I – got little education and what i got as education i got in europe because i was born in france and laura got some of her education in the uk because she was born in the uk so we can't really give you advice on on these kind of things because yeah. well it just wouldn't be you know it, it will not be honest information yeah and information that we can back up with fact and numbers yeah. so our expertise so, yeah. are traveling in new zealand and, and about basically the destinations in yeah. new zealand however and the um, south pacific yeah, and the South Pacific, but yeah, our expertise is definitely not in the education system of New Zealand. Hello, she says, have you traveled on Air New Zealand? Yes. Yes. Is there anything in particular I look forward to on my 15-hour flight coming from California? Honestly, it's a, it's a flight. It's not, there's nothing particular. There the are, S, the, the yeah. safety video is always fun. Yeah, the <laughs> safety video is always fun, but that's like that you would like two minutes at yeah. most. Um <laughs> The outfit that the air stewardess is wearing has a little bit of a, of a Maori pattern on it, but that's pretty much it. There's really nothing. There's it's not really. There is nothing too different. It's not, yeah, it, it's but a lot of. Um, a lot you of, can take some cheaper flight to New Zealand and not miss anything. Yeah, there's a. It's it's very similar to other long haul airline experiences yeah. because when you are traveling long haul. The experiences tend to have offer more than your normal sort of short flights. You are uh, offered, you know, you have in-flight meals and and you usually get a good, um, you know, you have an entertainment system and you get like tons of movies and TED Talks. <laughs> I remember watching TED Talks on there for to watch. Like, so you tend to ha you have more from doing a long haul flight. But with Air New Zealand, it, it's pretty similar to other airlines that we've taken. Um, so, yeah, but. The, the airline safety video for Air New Zealand is always very different to other airlines and it's usually very funny. So yeah. that's always that's always good. Beverly says, your website is very user-friendly and organized well. It is easy to negotiate through the topics and menus. Your articles are great too. Oh, look at that. Boom. Oh, beautiful. That's Thank this you. one here, guys. You can check it out. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Beverly. You are very kind. I like it. Uh, I think Emoji Guy is giving us some ideas of videos. He said, pack and save shopping with us with price in New Zealand dollars. <laughs> Countdown shopping with us, uh, you know, uh, price in New Zealand dollars. Kmart, dot, dot, dot. It would be so useful for newcomer in New Zealand uh, that can help with budgeting more precisely um, and guaranteed to catch a good chunk of attention and viewer accounts. Oh, well, so we're not really trying to look like to try to catch attention and viewer accounts. That's not really our, pro our process. But we did think about doing those ones. However, I don't know if you know that, but you do need filming authorization in order to do that. And none of the uh, supermarkets that we've ever been to have left uh, let us film there. So we were never able to do that. But I did a video similar to that with the price of food 
in New Zealand, and I did that through their website because they have a lot of their prices on websites and everything like that. So um, I will update that quite regularly, but the last one I did was less than six months ago. So, uh, mm. so yeah. But, uh, yeah, I will update this one regularly. I can only do it through their website. I cannot do it from inside the shop. Yeah. If you do want up-to-date prices of the food in New Zealand, we do have article on NZ Pocket Guide. I feel like we keep on talking about the website now. But we do have full articles there where we literally go through every kind of staple staples of uh, the food items in, um, in, in the New Zealand supermarket and we tell you the price range for all of them. So we do have articles with all that on nzpocketguide.com and we do have a video on the channel with uh, me going through the website of the supermarket because you just can't do it from inside the shop, which is annoying. Uh, but I'll, I'll try to ask again. Why not? Anthony comes to talk. Say, stay safe, but I'm here until the end. Yes, we are about to wrap it up, guys. So we're going to go quite fast. Uh, came out does not let filming. Um, okay. Just so you know, uh, because, yeah, we did ask as well. Uh, Kiwi Loren says, our local theater company was a support supposed to do Chicago, the musical, in th summer 2020. Now it's looking like 2022, which means I'll be bugging you to hang out in either July or August of 2023. Tons, Tons of, of time. time yeah. yeah, that's a lot of time. Yeah, that, that, but I like, you know what? I usually like to be told ahead of time. <laughs> yeah, we um, can plan for that. We can plan for hanging out. To be fair, <laughs> I've already, there is about like, Four months of 2022 that I've already planned for us. That's then you kind of like, oh, far ahead. We do plan sometimes our lives because we do like try to do a lot of stuff. It's obviously subject to this COVID nonsense, but it's about four months of 2022, which I already planned. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you know, telling us ahead is a good thing. Uh, Arpit says, should we visit New Zealand in winter or will it spoil our trip because I'm from India and we have a hot climate here. So would you suggest uh, the best month for it? So if you want good weather in New Zealand, you cannot pick a, a specific month. The weather is extremely changeable. However, if you want the warmest temperature, it will be uh, November, December, January and February. That'd be the four months you want to travel to in New Zealand. Traveling in New Zealand in winter gets really cold. So if you're from India and you really don't want the real cold, don't go yeah. for that. But it's, it's not, you know, it, it's bearable. I mean, we live in New Zealand. It's winter right now. And look, we're not shivering to death. So yeah. it's, it's okay. It's bearable as long as you have the right clothing and stuff. And if yeah. you do come to New Zealand in winter and, for instance, you don't have the right sort of gear to keep you warm because you don't usually need that in India then you know you uh, if you were coming to New Zealand in winter you'd probably have to you know spend quite a lot to get your you know get all the right clothing and stuff to make sure that you are warm because once you have all the right clothing you are perfectly comfortable in New Zealand in winter it's just that extra expense if you actually don't ha own any of that clothing yourself yeah um Kalo says, oh, I have a bunch of video recommendations, navigating roundabouts. Yes. So you know <laughs> oh, what? Yeah. I have that in mind and I will be working on that for you. I just need a little bit of time to work something uh, yeah. out. But I have something in mind. It will probably be, I actually can even tell you dates. I will probably be able to do that for you. And that is by, oh my, oh my. So that's probably going to be uh, in the first week of August, my dear. Uh, I'm <laughs> right, working I'm on right. that. So, because we will need to, if for instance, uh, we had an idea of doing like a drone shot above yeah. a roundabout, but you do need to have like, you know, permits and stuff in order to, to do that sort of in public areas in, yeah. in New Zealand. So that's going to take quite a while to sort of. Yeah work out for you but stay stay tuned <laughs> also i want to i i'm i'm picturing a a, a a bit of a chaotic roundabout that i want because i like that you get more kind of example and everything like that so <laughs> i'm gonna be working on that but it will take a little bit of time so yeah I've, I've already put a few pieces into into place to try to make this one happen but i think it's going to be the first week of august at the at the earliest for me to have this video ready for you mm -hmm. and i know it's not nice to Say, hey, you got two months to wait for a stupid roundabout video, but uh, yeah, I have to. And I'm hey, for Lake Tech Poet Night, we actually do have a video. Yes. It's, it's, it's hard, you know, we did only just have a GoPro and we did this video, so we don't actually have a video of the stars, but we do have some pictures that we took. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, you can check out our channel, our YouTube channel, and search. Um, Tech, maybe Tech a Post Stargazing NZ Pocket Guide. You should find the yep. video of us. We actually do um, a stargazing tour and stuff like that. So we actually already have a video on that. Here you go. Yeah. Um, but we can forgive you, Kelo, because we have more than 1,300 videos on the channel. So you can't help watch them all. 
um, oh, you'll get crazy <laughs> if you yeah. do. So don't do that. We talk too much in all those videos. Uh, okay, emoji guys say thanks with a heart. That's nice. Extreme Talata says see you next week. Kim Lawrence, Benzil me new schedule two years from now. Okay, okay. that is uh, that is June. 2023 penciled <laughs> beverly gibson says are there um are there what we in the u.s called dollar store in new zealand do you know what i mean stores with a variety of cheap goods mostly costing one yes. US dollar. yes, yes there, is. there is they're usually called variety stores or yeah dollar stores yeah. or it's not thing. one dollar though it's usually like it's usually yeah. two three four five that's usually what it is rare to find things for one dollar yeah. but there is plenty in every town you will find in it. every sort of large yeah. town anyway yeah um Kalo says, does it snow in Milford Sound? Not really. I mean, if it's really, 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 really cold and everything like that, you will have like kind of it's mostly like on the peak surrounding Milford yeah, Sound. You don't really have it on it's the road. Sea levels, yeah, so. on the road to Milford Sound, yeah. um, there may be snow, but yeah, Milford Sound itself is actually on the coast. So, you know, typically snow doesn't really fall yeah. on the coast. But yeah, like it's not says. Alaska. Yeah. But yeah, so it would be on the surrounding peaks and on the roads coming in, uh, making it be icy, so drive mm -hmm. slowly and everything. But uh, yeah, aside from that, uh, you'll be good. Make sure to get snow chains if you come to Milford Sound in winter. Clay says, Beverly, yes, uh, we do it, but it's called $2 Shops Love. Hey, here you go. Yeah. That's a local yeah. telling you that, Beverly. That's a good way to wrap it up. 17 viewers, 17 likes. You guys are amazing. This it, this works my OCD perfectly. Now so, I can no, leave. <laughs> so no one click like anymore no one click dislike anymore we stay at 17 17 and you guys are awesome all right thank you so much for watching this live session that was fun to hang out with you guys we'll be back here next week at 8 a.m news oh 18 viewers 18 likes we're no, good no, we're good i'm not 20 no! <laughs> <laughs> anyway that was awesome to hang out with you guys answering all your questions about traveling in new zealand it was really cool we had some really good questions and everything i think i think it was kind of uh it was it was a lively one so I love it. Um, and then, yeah, if you want to pick up Brain 24-7, it's nzpocketguy.com. Is it still, is it the correct one? No, it's not. Well, here you go. nzpocketguy.com if you want to pick up Brain 24-7. In the meantime, you can also ask your questions on the comment section of any of our videos. Also, you know what? Do a good deed today. Share one of our videos on your YouTube page. On your, no, sorry, on your Facebook page. Pick one of our stupid videos and share it. Maybe we'll reach some more viewers and we'll get to 25,000 subscribers at some point. Why not do that? In the meantime, <laughs> you guys have a lovely day. But, oh, yeah, tag us. You tag at NZ Pocket Guide so then we can reshare the, the stuff that you share. If you make a stupid joke, we'll share it. Yeah, we'll Don't worry. Chain reaction we, we, have, we have no shame in sharing stupid jokes. Bye-bye, guys. See you next week. See you next week.